All right, so this past summer, I was actually out in D.C., which was my first time. It was pretty awesome. I did forget about this footage, so that's why it's coming out so late. So we'll see how much I actually remember, and we'll see how this narration goes. But the cool thing about Washington, D.C. is they have a really cool botanical garden. And the best part, it's free. Honestly, most things in D.C. are free. It's a very interesting city. Uh, definitely worth checking out. It's a cool vacation spot. But yeah, this is THE United States Botanical Garden, so pretty cool. When you walk in, you're greeted with a really long and large and tall glass house with a big variety of different stuff. I think this is sort of like their show dome or something. Like, I bet the stuff in here changes out with the seasons or maybe they even, like, host events here. It was really cool and it had this nice little river that ran through and just tons of different alocasias. It was quite a sight to see all the different types that they had in different pots and they were all such full pots that it was really neat to see. It was just really pretty. The overall vibe in this place is really awesome. Sadly, I'm probably not going to be able to name a lot of these off the top of my head because I don't remember it's been so long, and in most of the footage I don't really snag those uh, tag names, but uh, I'm sure you can look these up and, I don't know, there's not that many large alocasias that we all collect, so I'm pretty sure you can find it with some simple searches. But yeah, there was just a bunch of different varieties and it just looked really neat. They had a few different domes and we'll just walk through them as we go. They had a really impressive tropical dome as well. Some of the botanical gardens that I've been to in the last like year or so are really lacking in their anthurium department as far as I can tell. And so this place actually had a decent variety. I was happy to see some larger like velvet anthuriums and a lot of other cool species that I have yet to see or just it's nice to see them in these environments. Because like I said, some of the ones I've been to in other states just haven't had a huge anthurium collection. You could tell this place has been around for a very long time because they had a lot of really cool water features and a lot of awesome aerial vines. I mean, the place was really well grown in and it just had a nice, awesome like vibe and feeling. It was really cool. And again, they had a lot of anthurium everywhere and that always makes me happy because that's something I just like to see. I'm, I'm a big fan of anthuriums and a lot of those were also like pollinated. So there was berries and stuff. I was looking for someone to ask if I could have some, but I really couldn't find any workers that weren't like busy doing something. They had a really nice Monstera. I'm not sure if this was Addisonii or something similar, but you can see how when they grow up the trees, they get much bigger leaves. This is another reason why you got to get a lot of your aeroids on moss poles because you can see there's quite a difference. Overall, they really just had a nice variety of stuff. Again, there's Monstera, Philodendron, a lot of ferns, Anthurium, a lot of things that I can't even name, Alocasia. There's just stuff everywhere. And it was nice to kind of pick out the ones that I know and see some new stuff that I haven't seen before. This was a really amazing Philodendron that I recorded. This one is Philodendron domesticum. It was just an incredible species. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It is really just turning this giant mass of leaves and roots, and it was just really a sight to see. I love this kind of stuff. I really like these massive, mature plants that you can tell have been in the conservatory for years and years. They had a lot of big bird nest anthuriums too, which I'm always a fan of because it's really cool to see them in their big size. I have some in my house, but obviously they don't get nearly as large. And this one had a fantastic spadix covered in berries. I was so tempted just to snatch a couple of these up. But again, I couldn't find any workers anywhere to really answer my questions or see if they would share some. So sadly, I had to leave them be. Like most conservatories, they did have like a desert arid, arid style dome where they had a lot of cactuses, aloes, and different plants that really don't need tons of water. It was pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not like an ultra fan of these style plants. I like them and I can appreciate them. But because I don't really grow many varieties at home, they don't excite me that much. But so I can't really comment on like whether it's a really good collection or not because I don't know enough about this stuff. But it looked pretty impressive to me. And there was just a lot of really cool specimen that have obviously been here for a long time. And again, that's what I love seeing most in conservatories. It's like the one place other than like in nature that you can really see what plants will look like and they've been given a long time to grow. I'm starting to see my collection hit that point with certain plants where they've been alive and growing for three to four years and they're really getting that awesome appearance. And that's what I just love most about plants when they kind of hit that peak size. So there seemed to be a lot of that in here with a lot of specimen and it was just a cool sight to see. This was significantly smaller than the tropical dome as, as well. It wasn't like, I bet you this was probably like 15% of the size, but still big enough for these kind of plants. I don't think they need as much space, honestly. Shortly after that more arid dome, they had a small dome full of different ferns. I think they were, it was trying to like simulate like a prehistoric world or like prior to humans and like even like mammals and whatnot. Uh, Cause there was a lot of cycads and other like plants that we consider to be pretty ancient. 
So it was pretty cool. I really like Psycad Fern rooms. I think they're really pretty because they have quite a unique apparent appearance compared to most stuff. And some of them get quite nice like greens in their fronds. And I just enjoy them. I just like the, the way they create these patterns in the space with these long leaves with all the tiny little like petal like structures on them. And with ferns mixed in, it was really beautiful. And I just, I don't know, I just like ferns a lot. They're one of my favorite plants. And if I'm ever a gazillionaire, I'm just going to build a giant fern room. But that's probably not happening. Like I've said a million times already, a lot of this stuff is really established and really large. And I love it so much. These ferns really were incredible. They're different shades of green. I know it doesn't come across super well on the camera. But in there, it was really awesome. And just, there was mosses everywhere. It just was really beautiful. There was one fern with these insane different colored fronds. Like the new fronds were very like purplish reddish. And they stuck out so well. It was so beautiful. I, Like I said, I just really love these guys. I love fern rooms. There's a really nice one in Chicago. Obviously, this was nothing in comparison in size, but still they had nice specimens. They also had a number of carnivorous plants as well, which I was pretty shocked by that. So far in all the botanical gardens I've visited, like carnivorous plants are kind of left to like a small aquarium, basically, or some really little stage that... I mean, is maybe maybe eight feet by eight feet at most. Like, there's really not much space dedicated to them besides the Atlanta Botanical Garden. They had an entire field of Saracenia, so I can't say anything about them because the Atlantic Botanical Garden was insane. Atlantic Atlanta Botanical Garden was awesome with carnivorous plants. They had fields of them actually, but this was the next best place in my opinion. They had a lot of different types of plants on display. It was a whole room pretty much dedicated to them, and it was really pretty. They had some other really interesting plants in there, like ant plants. They're kind of like a, I believe it's a fern with like really big rhizomes. And usually ants can like take up their house inside there. They're really interesting. So there was a lot of really cool stuff in this room. Um, again, definitely different from most uh, other botanical gardens I've been to. Maybe because this is like the United States Botanical Garden. They have a good variety. I'm not sure, but they did a really good job. It's not really a labyrinth, but there's a lot of like interconnected domes and it's uh Make sure you explore a little bit because it's easy to miss a section, quite honestly. But I found myself back in the tropical dome and I decided to give the actual like catwalk a try. So the cool thing about this place, and I saw this I think in Spain actually, they had some pretty cool greenhouses. Um, I didn't, I don't think I recorded that because I didn't bring any like video cameras on that trip because it was whatever. That doesn't matter. Point is, they had a really cool like elevated experience. So you can go up all these stairs, or I even believe there might have been an elevator. But the cool thing is you can really get this whole canopy feel and this canopy view of the tropical dome. So it was really neat to be up at that like different perspective and just to see how the plants differ. And it just gives you, a, again, like a unique perspective of the whole place. And it was a lot of fun to walk up there. There was a lot of hanging baskets. You could sort of see like what the heads of some of these like climbing plants looked like. It was just a really cool experience. I definitely recommend taking the time to walk up the stairs or find the elevator and just walk the circle because it's cool to see everything from above. And you can look down on the peons beneath you. Again, I almost missed this room. So make sure if you're here, you really do walk around. Because it's not like a clear path to some extent. There's a lot of forks in the road, crisscrosses, and you can easily miss a room. So they had a room dedicated to orchids. It wasn't super big, but it was packed full. And it was really awesome to see. And they had a cool tree in there that really let like dappled light like shine through and just backlight some of the orchids. And it was really beautiful. They even had some orchids with little signs that said like, I'm fragrant. But it kind of scams you because you see this pretty flower and you think, wow, fragrant, it's going to be great. But then <laughs> it really stunk so bad. It was a terrible smell. So be careful. Maybe don't get too close for the first whiff because it can surprise you. But yeah, they had a huge uh, selection of orchids. And one of my favorite, uh, I guess, families maybe. I'm not sure what the taxonomy is or how that whole tree works. But I really like Bulbophyllum orchids. And they had huge bunches in here again really well established pots of these things and so when they flower it's absolutely breathtaking because there's so many flowers and again it's one of my favorite style of orchids so i was in heaven in this room as well that's pretty much it for this tour there was a few other rooms but they were more more focused on like education for like not children but just like um it seemed like if they weren't doing like an, a thing in there then it wasn't really that exciting kind of hydroponic stuff but i know this channel most people care about tropical like rare plants and stuff so i didn't really film it and um again it wasn't very big but i might even miss some stuff in this place so definitely if you're in dc seek this place out this is the united states botanic garden and it's awesome so i highly recommend it a lot of cool stuff to see i guess that's pretty much it for this video guys may your plants grow strong and healthy i'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.